Welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. We are 26 days into the English Premier League season and we already have our first managerial casualty after Bournemouth sacked Scott Parker. Parker took charge of Bournemouth 14 months ago and guided them to promotion. But a tough run of fixtures at the start of the season has yielded one win and three straight defeats. Okay, so on August 6, we would have seen Bournemouth lost. No, they actually won their first game 2 0 to Aston Villa. Then, after that, is where everything went downhill. On August 13, Manchester City beat them 4 0. Then, Arsenal 3 0. And then, Liverpool, that Liverpool 9 0. I get the sense has something to do with what we're talking about now. Well, in a statement on their website, Bournemouth's owner, Maxim Denin, described Parker's tenure as one of the most successful in the club's history. This is what he said. I would like to place on record my gratitude to Scott and his team for their efforts during their time with us. Our promotion back to the Premier League last season under his tenure will always be remembered as one of the most successful seasons in our history. However, in order for us to keep progressing as a team and a club as a whole, it is, uncon it is unconditional that we are aligned in our strategy to run the club sustainably. We must also show belief in and respect for one another. That is the approach that has brought this club so much success in recent history and one that we will not veer from now. Well, following Parker's sacking, Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp suggested that the Englishman was set up to fail. Let me say like this, when I heard it, when I heard it today, then I felt really, and I think that's the moment when you realize how important the right owners are. That's how it is. And it's not about spending because no, there's, we all know the thing, there have been different systems in the Premier League, how clubs are leaded. We spoke about it, countries own clubs, so uh, some rules don't let them do exactly what they want. If they could do, if they could stretch their... Um, their, sort, their resources, that would be really strange that they, they could do absolutely everything because they are owned by countries. So, and they have other clubs with other structures, and that's, that's um, like us, and maybe, I'm not sure, Arsenal or, or whoever. Um, and then there are clubs like Bournemouth, and um, you saw now three teams coming up it's um, Fulham, um, Nottingham Forest, and, 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 and Bournemouth. Nottingham is spending like, yeah, they spend, and um, Fulham is doing some stuff, and I, I can't remember that Bournemouth did a lot. So, um, and that's then obviously difficult if you come up uh, from from Championship and you arrive in the Premier League, and uh, that's not easy for a coach. Uh, so I felt really for Scott, not because I don't, I think his team is not good enough. No, not at all. His team did not had just. I'm not sure who had that idea to give you uh, from the first four games. It gives you Arsenal, City, and Liverpool. That's that, that's like set up. If you have nervous owners, then it's like set up for a, um, a new manager. Let's see how what he can do. So um, and that's why I'm. I was very surprised. Very surprised. I think Scott is an outstanding manager. To be honest, what he did at Fulham. First job and out Bournemouth in a in a championship getting up is is an outstanding achievement um, and really difficult. And then you get four games and three of them are against Arsenal, City, and Liverpool. And your owner tells you, "See you later." Uh, that's really well. Chief football writer for the Times in England, Henry Winter, shares Klopp's opinion. Winter writing on Twitter: Owners loathe being criticised publicly, but Scott Parker's right. Hashtag AFCB squad needs proper strengthening. Maxim Denim understandably won sustainability, but Parker guided them to Premier League, guaranteeing 150 million plus, yet club then only spent 24 million. Parker deserved more players and time. Well, so far in the transfer window, Bournemouth has only brought in three players on free transfers and signed two others for a total cost of around 26 million euros. Lance, was Parker indeed set up to fail? Well, to be honest, his, his roster, player for player, isn't impressive. And he's in 
a top flight of the English Premier League that has players with with glowing CVs and um, lots of money being spent. Not not that much. And the fact is, of the four matches that he has lost so far, or he had lost, they were against three of the top teams. So it is a little it's a little harsh to judge him on the losses that he had against these big teams. Having said that, and I saw some of the tweets which will come up later in the show, you know, just completely castigating Bournemouth for making the decision that they did. But 9-0 is not a normal defeat. 9-0 is a heavy defeat. Yes, Against a Liverpool? 9-0 by any, by any standard is a heavy defeat. And he has, he has paid the price for that. Um, Quite frankly, I am usually sympathetic to coaches when they lose their, their jobs in situations like these. But Bournemouth know what they want. And there are reasons that they would put forward for making the decision to sack Scott Parker. Having said that, the job he did to bring them up to the Premier League was a fabulous, is a fabulous job. They finished second in the championship last year. So that meant automatic promotion. And uh, they were the best defensive team in the league last year lost fewer matches than any other team in the championship so they came into the premier league with a good season behind them a good promotion season behind them but they haven't beefed up their roster enough to challenge strongly and um for him it would be disappointing but Bournemouth is looking at the 9-0, and 9-0 is, is pretty heavy. I actually think Bournemouth owners are looking at more than just the 9-0, because what I get from Scott Parker is from the first game in the post-match interviews, he would talk about... He, one thing about him is he never really minced his words. So at a post-match interview, he would speak about the Falklands that, you know, he didn't get the transfers that he would have wanted. Yes. So he says that flat, like, you know, he didn't have the materials to work with. And I get the sense that, you know, speaking out in that manner sort of robbed the owners in the wrong way. And this Liverpool 9-0... Made it easy. Made it easy made for it them. Made it easy. Because yeah. if, when I was reading the statement from the owner, and very carefully, the, the choice of the word respect you get the sense that the owners feel disrespected by Scott Parker because he's like letting everybody know what the case is. Yeah. As in, you know, you didn't give me enough to work with. So, you know, game after game, and it must be frustrating for him. So he decides to tell the press and, you know, it's, it's never good when a manager comes out at the beginning of a season and starts letting the media know what's really taking place. And that's the mm. route that Scott took. And, mm. of course, it didn't end well for him. Yeah, well, you are going to run the risk if you are taking a combative stance with your employers publicly. And, and the fact is that because he had done that, he is putting himself in a position that he's already in conflict with, with his employers. So if he doesn't get the results, it makes it easier for them. Yeah. And I said 9-0 is, is not a normal defeat. 9-0 is 9-0. Is yeah, 9-0 mm. for sure. Mm. Just hope the owners, you know, pay heed and strengthen up Bournemouth because they wouldn't want to be relegated well, again. Well, they may do that now that he's not there because, because of his stance, they probably didn't want him anymore. So mm. the question you put to me originally about was he set up um, could probably have something behind it. Mm. Right, see? Correct. <laughs> well, round five of the EPL got underway earlier today with four matches. Here are the results. We had a one-all draw between Crystal Palace and Brentford. Fulham overcoming Brighton and Hove Albion 2-1. Then the same result, a 2-1 win for Southampton against Chelsea. And then a one-all draw between Leeds United and Everton. The remaining fixtures, we'll see. Arsenal up against Aston Villa. This is on Wednesday. Bournemouth play Wolves. We'll see how they do. Manchester United up against Nottingham. West Ham, they play Tottenham. And Manchester City. Did I say Manchester United? How could I do that? <laughs> Liverpool play Newcastle. And on Thursday, Leicester play Manchester United, the red one. So Lance, of course, me <laughs> slipping up there. How unfortunate. I guess Manchester United has been on my mind only because I, of the transfer. I wonder transfer. why. I wonder because why. Because I sit between two of them. Mm. And then I was thinking about the Anthony transfer today. Like, you know, that has been on my mind. Mm. But we have a lot of Premier League matches. Oh. We're going to talk first yes. about Chelsea's defeat today. Yes. Uh, what did you make of that? Disappointing. Well, well, yeah, it would be for them. Um, Tuchel seems to be running into some problems. But remember yesterday when we were previewing the match, I, I did put it to 
um, Simon Evans yeah. that Chelsea can't take Southampton lightly, lightly, especially having put on such a stout performance against Manchester United over the weekend. And um, they, they, they delivered, they delivered a, a good result. But uh, although it is early in the season and there is time for Chelsea to get their act together, no question that Chelsea fans will be a little flustered about the stuttering start that they've had to the season because um, I, I don't know that Tuchel has the answers immediately to try to solve some of the problems and some of the players who were strong last year aren't looking that strong this year and um, there is some work to be done for Tuchel A and Stamford Bridge. Yeah, Raheem clicking, but that's the only thing that's clicking right now. Mm. We go to break, we'll be right back.